Good afternoon people, it's 2.43 which means I have about two hours to finish tidying the bench down, put the rest of this stuff away or at least out of the way and then we can start on the whole book. Now it may be that the first thing I have to do is to try somehow to clean inside the bed which is not going to be easy I can see possibly I can get a power wash in that way and I can get a power wash in that way and I can use some of my strongly alkaline degreaser just to get the muck out because it is filthy in there but what do you expect right I found this I was telling you last week that I suspect that the bed has a twist in it at the moment. Now my floor is fairly flat but the floor that I've been standing on for a long long time probably wasn't because it was quite rough. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is to check across here with the level probably across there with the level because this is the this is under the headstock so the headstock goes to there so under the headstock we have actually clean uh, flaking both sides so I need to check across there and across there with the level and check for bed twist then I need to by the look of it if I zero there and slide along to this end I'm about plus five here Right, so quite a bit of twist. I need to put something under that foot to twist it that way a little bit to see if it just to see if it works. When we've got the bed straight, we can then assess what wear we have here. Now, can I show you that closely? There's a lot of striations. But then there isn't a great deal of actual wear and as I said because it's uneven across that way it's difficult to measure. Uh, I've been looking at some stuff which has been recommended to me called Belzona which is a steel powder in a two pack resin. They also do a version which is self lubricating so it wouldn't provide stiction but obviously what I'd have to do is get a long straight edge from somewhere or a longer straight edge that will bridge from say this one one part here to this one one part here so I want something about three foot I need to check it I don't think it's it's a great it's bad right but I can measure it down a thou and a half with a feeler gauge so I'm going to carry on looking at this, then I'm going to get this bed into the doorway, I'm going to have to move the tractor right in, get the bed into the doorway and try and clean inside it, right, just to get it clean, just to start with, and then I think the first job is to probably flat it all, get some paint on it and build from there. Then I have all those parts down there to clean down and uh, check for wear and build up as we go. But the first thing I want to do is to build up the headstock, check the strip the headstock, uh, probably paint the castings, put it back together, put them on the lathe and that gives me a fixed point there and then do the same with the tail stock give me a fixed point there then I can put a test bar in between them and I can then measure from that test bar uh, and see see what a sort of position we're in I can't see any point in just rebuilding this lathe as it is if it does need some uh, some recovery work on there but there you go but I mean pretty much it's it's in fair condition you see, we don't know, we don't know that the person that that last had it did this. This is 
been through several owners. I believe it came from Bridlington, but I'm not sure. Uh, I bought it at a house in a house in Little Driffield. Uh, but if you look at most of it, apart from here where it's had quite a bit of abuse, it's in good condition. Anyway, it is what it is and we've got it. So I'm now going to finish clearing this bench. I'm going to clean this bench down, put this stuff away somewhere. Not the uh, not the counter shaft. I need to... That, that counter shaft was on the lathe. It was mounted on here. Uh, this type of this type of lathe usually has a large well it has a large foot at this end and it has a big bracket up here with the counter shaft up here up here let me stand back this isn't making my camera works terrible it has a big shaft that stands up here with the counter shaft and the motor on it uh, because looking at that that appears to only provide three speeds but having never had a counter shaft laid before I don't know and the back gear of course there is a back gear on it as well uh, I'll have to look into it right I'm going to crack on with this I'm going to shut my gob stop rambling and crack on with this and get this lot sorted out so we've got a nice clean tidy area to work and then I might, I might actually put that uh, Put those up as well. Now I can get it in my drill. Now I've moved the tractor. Right, onward. Bye now. And there we go, folks. Lin bins up. I have loads more kicking around the place with stuff in them. Just use as boxes on shelves. And as I come across them, I shall put them up. Sorted. Another step forward. Bye now. Right, folks. Friday, five o'clock. I've had a few interruptions, but we have made some progress. There's still a bit to do on the bench, and there's still a bit to do on the floor, but it is getting there. And those lin bins are going to be very useful. I have all sorts of stuff that's blocking those shelves up that can go in lin bins, and that will relieve the pressure on there. So, Thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for Wednesday's Fun and Games. And we'll get on with the whole brook instead of procrastinating. I'm not procrastinating really. I want to get on with it, but I also want a tidy bench on which to work. And uh, that's what I'm going to have. All that pile in the corner is whole brook bits. Right, see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good afternoon folks, it's Wednesday, it's 3.30 and I've just got here with our tumble dryer to repair because the belt snapped and while I'm on with it I'm going to put the patented Phil Whitley bearing conversion on it so that it turns easier and uses less electricity. Uh, what can I tell you, went to Castle Hill this morning, went shopping, got back at about 11 o'clock found the order for the carbon brushes for the washing machine on the uh, on the step opened it wrong brushes completely wrong sent the they've sent the right the right packing slip but they've put the wrong carbon brushes in with it you know in spades so that took a couple of hours to sort out and really the day just has just gone in sorting that out getting emails sent backwards and forwards realising suddenly that they're sending all the emails to the wrong dead email address and have to get back onto them then have to take a picture of the order and send that back to them and then find that shrink pick wasn't working anymore so I download shrink pick again and it still won't work I have no idea why but I have recently had a windows update so it could be no longer functioning so anyway I sorted it all out and I was just about to set off at half past two when I thought Oh Christ, I've got the tumble dryer to repair. So I said, look, I'm going to take it to the workshop and I'm going to put the bearing modification on it while I'm on. Uh, there's only You've got to strip the thing right down to change the belt anyway, so I may as well. So off we go, into the tumble dryer. I'll bring you back when I'm halfway through. It's not very interesting, but it's what I've got to do. Bye now. 
Right folks, tub out. This is a tumble dryer. A hot point after it's been modified to stop it catching fire. And all that lot's in the bottom. I've just started scraping it together and I thought, no, I'll, I'll take a picture of this. I'll take a picture of it. So there you are. So that's why they catch fire. Look at this down here. Look. Now this is supposed to be a felt seal that stops the fluff from getting out of the tub. And of course what happens is when it gets into the bottom here it gets sucked into the fan. Right, that's the fan there. That's the fan on this outside shaft and the fan blows straight into the heating element. Thus it catches fire. But never mind, we don't care. Is that mic above? <laughs> no, it looks like it is, but never mind. Right, so now you know why they catch fire. Because they leak dust into the case and then the dust builds up in the element and they catch fire. Because the dust seals are inadequate. As is the bearing system. How worn is that bearing? Oh, that bearing's not too bad actually. However, I have a, I have a different method that I use for the bearing. So I'll put that into operation right now. Bye now. Well folks, it's still Wednesday. It's 6.30. And I thought the belt was too short. But actually it isn't. It's the wonderful new stretch belt which has got some sort of elastoma in it and I'm leaving it overnight to see if I can stretch it out enough to just slip it onto the shaft before it shrinks again. I checked up on the internet and it says this belt number this belt is a stretch belt they can be very difficult to fit well why the bloody hell have you invented them then? What's the great advantage? There you go. Right, anyway. In between times, I've had a bit of a play with the, uh, the saddle. And it's actually quite pleasing. We're leaving striations in the oil here. But the underside of the saddle is very worn. Not in a way that there's a huge amount of difference to the depth there should be, but it's got a lot of striations in it. But when you stone it, I've stoned it lightly just to get a, an idea of what's touching. You realise that it's, it's just scored and that is the ideal sort of surface. It's evenly scored from end to end and that's the ideal surface to repair with uh, that stuff I was talking about the other day, that I've forgotten the name of. Uh, so I might be ordering some of that pronto. Uh, no, I can't remember what it's called. B something. Uh, but there you go. Anyway, so I've had a, a sort of long day today. Only problem was it didn't start till about half past three. So, there's a bit more Holbrook work done. And I've uh, started to look at the bits started to look at the tail uh, headstock there's quite a lot of uh, play on these bear well not not a lot there is there is perceivable play on the headstock bearings so they obviously want adjusting uh, so that's the next thing I'm going to look, look into but obviously all this is once taking out and cleaning and the bearings cleaning and then the headstock cleaning and then painting and then reassembly. So that's probably going to be about the first job. But in the meantime, I'm going to get some of this stuff that begins with B that the name escapes me for now. Uh, and see if I can't build that or just fill in the striations. The do one actually that is is especially designed for machine slides. And it's uh, it's self-lubricating because of course what you have to get over is is the stiction. Now I've put some fairly heavy oil on this just to get an idea of how it moves. 
and it moves really well and it's not grounding out anywhere it's not suddenly becoming stiff and grounding out but the whole idea I don't know I don't know if you're going to be able to if I'm going to be able to get anywhere where you can pick up the flaking yes that sort of picks it up there that's a flaked surface the whole idea of a flaked surface is that what you're looking at the bits you're looking at the shiny bits yeah I think you can see that the shiny bits are the high spots and the bits in between are slightly lower and trap oil so you've got a surface now that isn't so good there but this is under the tailstock you've got a surface that traps oil and that there are a lot of contact points on to support whatever's running on it but it doesn't stick it's lubricated and it slides oh we've got some muck in there that's what that's the problem there but never mind anyway I can't stay out to play anymore but I have been allowed to come out and play on Saturday possibly even Sunday to make up for the fact that I've hardly been able to play at all this week so I'll see you later that is the end of my Wednesday bye now good morning folks Thursday and the belt is on right so for anybody that has to put one of these horrible stretch belts on a tumble dryer here's what we did pieces of wood one piece there another piece there and we got the belt round the drum we put a piece of steel under the belt and we stretched it and left it stretched overnight right came back this morning dropped the uh, piece of metal out went inside the uh, drum uh, underneath the machine with a screwdriver and it just slipped on right it was tight but it went straight on I mean yesterday it was it was a mile away it was just a mile away we weren't going to get it on but that overnight stretch has just made it much much easier although still not an easy job right it's Thursday and I'm here like my mood when I arrived here it's a bit dull and wet but my mood has improved ever so much since I've got that in because it means I can spend the rest of the day on the whole brook bye now right folks it's gone in the back of the car it's tested it's finished thank God for that and we're on with something interesting right whichever way you cut it whichever way you measure it it seems like this area here is about two and a half thou of wear on the back but I think a lot of that can be taken up under the saddle although looking at the oil on there I appear to be getting a good contact all the way along because it's I suppose the oil film will be thicker than two now. I, I, I'm going to think I'm going to have to blow it up, aren't I? And uh, slide it along just to see. But this appears to be having a good contact all the way along. If that was worn down two and a half down, it would have the effect of tilting the table and reducing the contact on this surface here. And it doesn't appear to be doing that, if at all. So I'm going to have to do some more clever measuring. But I've just had a a rake under here I have cleaned this out and it does feel like all the oiliness has gone and what is left there which is disgusting would now scrape out it feels like it's a, a scraping job and then possibly a pressure washing job when that's finished but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check across the uh, bed at either end and see if I can locate any twist so when I've done that, I'll bring you back again. And there she is, the Holbrook B9. Apparently, and I didn't know this when I bought it, a very rare lathe. There are only three others known to exist. So there you go. Bye now. 
Hello folks, 150 and I've started the clean up so I'm down in between the webs there cleaning out and that's what I've got out so far but I haven't done that end or this end yet, they're rather awkward so I've decided to break out he said zooming out I've decided to break out some PPE because I'm getting absolutely blathered I've done it with uh, a very alkaline cleaner the last time I was working on it and that's broken up all the fats and it, but it's left the dirt stuck to it so it is actually coming out quite easily where you can get to it but getting to it is the can I just shine you a light down there I'm a bit getting to it is the awkward part there isn't much there isn't much access, it's just that little square hole down there to get your arm in and scrape all that lot out. So it's going to be a matter of wire brushes on sticks and bits and pieces, but there's still metal down there, there's still metal filings down there. So we will get there. Uh, it'll be done by the end of today anyway. Right, I'll carry on. Bye now. Right folks, Thursday. Five to five. We've had a very good clean out of the inside of the bed, and we've got a lot of the green paint off because it's not been degreased underneath it. Thank goodness. Seems pretty stuck on the legs. If it's good on the legs, I will leave it on because there's no point in stripping off good paintwork. I should just paint over it. But as you can see. It's beginning to clean up. I've wiped it down with white spirit and a lot of the marks on it that I thought were rust were actually just congealed oil. It is actually, it's quite clean inside there but I'm going to give it, I'm going to do some more tomorrow. Probably with a solvent. Just so that we can get some, some paint on it, make it look right. But I think you'll agree that that's looking better already. And that's, that's what came out of the inside of the bed, so you can tell how filthy it was in there. As I say, I'd already done it with a solvent, with an alkaline solvent, which, which destroys the oil, but leaves the muck. And that's the muck that's been... I've been down here on a little seat, with my arms stuck up the bed, wire brushing it. And it's come off really well. So we are beginning to clean up. I've noticed... There's another plaque missing off there. That's the Holbrook one, but there should be another one next to it now. Whether that was a supplied by plaque, or whether that was the lathe type plaque, I don't know. I don't know if I've got it or not. I certainly didn't take it off, but I don't know if I've got it or not. If I have got it, it will be in those uh, those boxes of bits down there, which is a pain. But there you go. What can you say? What can you say? So, it's coming along. I've got more to do to it yet. As I've said before, painting anything, cleaning up anything, reconditioning anything, is a slow process of moving the dirt from the item onto me. And today I've been very successful at that. Although I have been wearing the super long rubber gauntlets until I took them off to put a dust mask on and then didn't put them back on again and got covered in crap as usual right folks I am back tomorrow after I've taken number two daughter to stay at number one daughter's in York so I shall see you all later tomorrow let me just get you a nice a nice long shot doesn't look bad does it it's coming it's cleaning up now it's coming clean be ready for some paint in no time. It looks like the bed's been done with uh, brush on filler because round here it's very thick and very flaked off and cracked off. Somebody's been drilling holes that I don't think should be there. There's two there, there's two there. You can soon bung those up again now. And also the starter's mounted, the starter was mounted down there which I don't think is particularly safe. I mean, given that this is the front of the lathe, I'd rather have it sort of hit this area 
you know, where I don't have to bend down for it. But there you go, that's just me. Right, see you all tomorrow at some time. Bye now. Morning, peeps. It's Friday. It's quite a nice day. The tractor's standing resplendent in the doorway. And I've come up with a new device for cleaning inside the... Uh, inside the bed here and it's doing a cracking job but as you can see there is still a lot of crap in there but it is coming out I don't know if I'm wasting my time doing this or not I tend to think that this is a really nice good lathe very rare lathe and it's probably worth making a good job of it but uh, my idea is to paint in there with red lead and then do the rest in grey so there you go. Right, onward. There's only one way to do this job and that's just to get stuck in and do it. Bye now. Right folks, Friday, five past five. And I think you'll agree that it's beginning, the shine's beginning to come back to it. I've spent a long time on the polished areas with uh, a bit of very fine wet and dry and some white spirit that's on here of course not on here and uh, likewise at the front and I've wire brushed and ground and uh, needle gunned the uh, the tray which is all cast in one piece with the bed instantly you can't separate this and this. This is all in one cast in one piece. Uh, the legs come off, of course. So, really, all I have to do to finish off cleaning it is just to clean the legs. And as I said, it doesn't look like it's been degreased properly, so the paint isn't really stuck, so it'll probably have to come off. But that's mainly... That's mainly... The bed's nice and clean. The chip tray's nice and clean and the uh, <laughs> and I'm bloody filthy of course uh, these, are the, these are the cloths I've been using uh, it really is filthy I've managed to clean inside the uh, the bed I think as well as I need to what I'm going to do is get a brush uh, I've, got a, I've got a scrubbing brush which is bendable and uh, I've lost it. It's here somewhere anyway, which I can clean inside the bed with white spirit and uh, get the last of the grease out. And then I think what I'm going to do is paint the inside in here with red lead. Give that two or three coats of red lead until it's good and good and coated up. And then I might paint it black. I might paint it black because that's the original colour that's the original colour generally speaking I don't like dark coloured machines I like light coloured machines like the uh, the Kovmak is a joy to work on because everything's white and you can it's easy it's easy to see uh, it's easy to see everything because there's plenty of light it's reflected whereas with a darker coloured machine oil me that's what you have to do with these machines every time you use them oil them with a darker colored machine that you know it things can disappear into little areas where you can't see them because it's black actually it, this could all be me because I have a thing about uh, I can't I've, I've had very defective eyesight in the past although it's not bad at all now and uh, I have trouble telling if I have to sort out a pile of dark colored clothes hopeless absolutely hopeless but see this again, you see, would it be in, it's much wider bed, but with it being painted down there, right, it reflects the light about and you can see much better than black. But because, because it's silver and because it's traditional, I think I'll paint it black because it's got plenty of, plenty of bright metal on it. But I think you'll agree, it's looking a lot better than it did when it came out. I've swept up yet another dustpan full of uh, 
crap and paint chips and rubbish that's come off it. So, next week, the legs, which are going to need wire brushing off because I think most of that green will come off because I don't think it's bonded on properly. Right? The legs, and then primer, probably a coat of red lead over the whole thing. I'm gathering, if you look here at the top of this, there's a line there and I gather that is where it paint, it's painted up to because it was painted on here but not on here of course. So I gather you paint up to that line in, uh, in black. I'm going to have to sand this down as well because that's, uh, that's quite badly, badly chipped off is that paint. There's, there's still areas that need a bit more work on the legs. So, Monday, I am confident I will finish this, which probably means I'll finish it about Wednesday. But as soon as that's done, I'm going to get some paint on it. I'm going to order up some Bell, well I'm going to speak to the people at Bellzona and see what products they have suitable for <coughs> slideway repair and get some of that ordered up and then we start on the headstock so next week will be the headstock uh, getting it stripped down, cleaned up and uh, sorted out so thank you all for watching thank you for subscribing welcome aboard to all the new subscribers I hope you're all logging in to watch the Holbrook uh, it's going to be fun it's going to be fun and uh, I'll see you all next week so give me a subscribe give me a like and make a comment if you like okay bye now